Hi, I'm Neil Winterag, president of Patient Reactivation Solutions, and welcome to the channel. Today, I wanna to talk to you about some of the myths about reactivating dental patients and some of the problems that your office is probably running into when it comes to reactivating because either you or your staff have gone into agreement that this is the reality of dealing with the hygiene department and the patients within the hygiene department. So the first myth I wanna clear up, people don't answer their phone. That is false. We have proven that time and time again here at Patient Reactivation Solutions because that is how we actually reach people is through the phone. Now, the reason that this is false and the reason that you probably think I'm crazy for saying it is false is because it takes a lot of phone calls to get people to answer the phone. And this is where the common uh, fall down is in a dental practice is because we don't actually think with how many phone calls does it take to reach one patient to then get an appointment. So you have to make the phone calls, reach the patients, then get the appointment. Well, to get one appointment, you might have to talk to two or three patients. And to talk to two or three patients, you might have to make 60, 70, 80 phone calls. I don't know how many phone calls it might be. It can be different. If the patients that you're calling are more recent within the last six months to a year, then you might be able to reach three patients and get one appointment and maybe 50, 60 phone calls. If you're calling patients that haven't been in in two, three, four years, then you're more likely to get answering machines, wrong numbers, et cetera. So the amount of phone calls that you have to make goes up drastically depending on when the last time the patient was in. But let's say under ideal circumstances, you're paying me to schedule and get appointments for you, whether I'm your assistant, your hygienist, I'm an external caller, whatever it is that you have set up, um, it might take me a hundred phone calls to reach enough people to get two, three, four appointments. And the reality is, if I'm a front desk or I'm your assistant or hygienist and I'm at the office and I'm just calling patients 10 minutes here, five minutes here, I missed one hygiene appointment, uh, so now I've got 45 minutes to call patients, I might not be able to make enough phone calls in that time period to get enough appointments to make it seem like it's worthwhile. At the end of the day, I go, doctor, well, you know, I called all of these charts and I got one appointment. And you go, man, people just don't answer the phone. Well, it only looks that way because you don't have enough time built in to where that person can actually make enough phone calls to get those patients to answer the phone. But I am here to tell you, people do answer their phone. You just can't go into agreement with the idea that nobody answers the phone. Myth number two is that patients don't care about their teeth. And that is why they don't come in and get their cleanings. That is also false. People actually do care about their teeth. Well, most people do. We already know that about one third of the US population doesn't see a dentist in a 12 month time period. So if you figure that's 110 million people a year, that just don't go to the dentist, okay, that leaves us with another 220 to 230 million people. Now, some of those people also aren't gonna go to the dentist and get their teeth cleaned. But let's say there's roughly 150 to 180 million people that go and see the dentist in a 12 month period. Most of those people are gonna do it twice a year as they should. The bottom line is people actually do care about their teeth. The reason they're not coming in and seeing you is they got busy. They got busy, they got tied up, they have grandkids, they take trips, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so time flies for the average person who doesn't think about their teeth every day. You have the luxury, whether you are a dentist or you work in a dental office, you are around teeth and dental health every single day. The average person does not think about their teeth every single day. And so it just, Time flies. You don't realize how much time actually has passed. And I will tell you something. I can't even begin to explain the numbers of people that when we call them, go, oh my gosh, I am so glad you called me. We hear that all the time. And we go, guess what? It's been longer than a year since your last appointment. And they go, no, 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 no. I was just there. And then you go, and you look and you realize they haven't been in in 18 months, 24 months, but they think they were there this year. That is just 
because people's sense of time is messed up. That's not because they don't care about their teeth. But if you agree that every 12 months that a patient hasn't been in to see you, that it means that they don't care about their teeth or that it means that they went to some other doctor and you deactivate that chart, you have lost that patient forever. So you cannot go into agreement with that. Again, I hear it every day. I'm so glad that you called. Oh my gosh, I've been meaning to call you guys and I haven't. What they mean is they've been thinking about it for six months and they didn't even realize that six months had gone by. That should lay to rest the myth that patients don't care about their teeth. Now, this is another myth that's probably quite controversial in the dental world just because I've been in the dental world for 18 years and I have heard 4 million different ideas about scheduling of hygiene, but I am here to let you know from personal experience before patient reactivation solutions and now that we have patient reactivation solutions and we have scheduled thousands of dental appointments, I want you to know that it is not specific days and specific hours that people will only schedule for. So I know that might sound controversial, but the truth of the matter is, based off of the thousands of appointments that we have set for many different types of offices, large offices, small offices, insurance-driven offices, fee-for-service offices, offices in big cities, offices in little cities, I can tell you that we can fill whatever appointments need to be filled no matter what day, no matter what time that it is. Okay. Um, just recently, we were calling for offices and they gave us appointments to fill on December 24th and December 26th. So we've got Christmas Eve and then the day after Christmas, as well as New Year's Eve. And I'm like, oh man, you know, look, these eight appointments open on these days and eight appointments on that day. I'm like, Phew. and you know what? Those appointments started to get filled and I was shocked. I actually couldn't believe it. But what that told me was that you cannot determine what from a timing perspective works for another person. Just because you wouldn't go and get your teeth cleaned on December 24th or December 26th or at three in the afternoon, because obviously at three in the afternoon, people are busy. So they only want to come in at seven in the morning or seven o'clock at night. If you go into agreement with that, then guess what? People won't schedule for two or three o'clock in the afternoon because you've already decided that people don't want to come in unless it's seven in the morning or seven o'clock at night or Saturday morning or whatever it might be. Everywhere is different, okay? I've got clients that have Saturday and Sunday appointments and I have clients that we schedule for that are only open four days a week and it's only open from eight to six o'clock. And you know what? It's what works for you and it's what works for you in your practice or in your area. You know, New York City, People are probably more used to going to the dentist on a Saturday or Sunday than they are in my hometown in Plymouth, Indiana. Because I can tell you, in Plymouth, Indiana, nobody's going to the dentist on Saturday and Sunday. But in New York, people probably go all the time on Saturday and Sunday. So there is no secret sauce or secret formula to timing to get people to come in. You just have to be good enough at convincing that patient on why they need to come in, that they will figure out their schedule to come in for that appointment at whatever time it is. So do not go into agreement with people will only schedule for certain hours or certain appointments. So that myth busted. All right, so the fourth and final myth I wanna go over in today's video is people will only respond to text and emails and that you can replace your reactivation with just text and emails. That is also false. Why is that false, Neil? Well, I can tell you because every office that I call and schedule for is already texting, emailing, and sending out postcards to my patients for their appointments, and they still have 100, 200, 4, or 500 open appointments in a month that people have not responded to the text calls and emails. So that is why the human element is extremely important when it comes to patient reactivation. Now, do text, emails, and postcards work? most definitely you cannot stop doing that. If you stop doing that, you're gonna be even more trouble. But imagine, I get a text from you, I get an email from you, I get a postcard from you, and then lo and behold, I get a phone call also reminding me to come in for my cleaning. Now I get to talk to the person. Yeah, I got the postcard, but I had a question. What about insurance? What about this? What about that? Do you cover this? Do you do that? These are questions that people have that is a barrier to them calling you when they get that postcard or when they get that text or when they get that email. 
I mean, I know personally, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, you're busy, you're in the middle of the day, you see an important text or an important email come in, and then you've got to get back doing what it is that you were doing, and you forget about it. And it's like a week later, you're like, oh my gosh, I never answered that text message. And at the time, you're like, oh, thank God I got that text. Things happen in life. And you cannot rely on just technology to do your selling for you. It still takes a real life person. And something that I strongly believe is that the more technologically advanced we become, the less in communication we become as people to people. And you cannot replace the human element in everything to do with life. You still need the human touch and you need the human element to it. So you have to follow up your texts and your emails with phone calls to your patients, telling them that you're still there and that you still care about them. So that's that myth bust as well. So I hope that you found this myth busting session helpful. I will be doing more filming along the way as we continue to schedule more and more patients. If you'd like to find out more information about patient reactivation solutions and how we can help you, find more information down below. Our website, email addresses, phone numbers, et cetera, will all be listed in there and you can reach out to me and I will talk to you. But these are just four of the myths that I wanted to go over that we have already busted in just a few short weeks here at Patient Reactivation Solutions. I'll catch you next time.